folks, how we doing? Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. In a previous video, we showed you this disc right here in action. Now we're gonna show you this cedar in action. And fair warning, I'm not looking to start any world wars here, but we have a Made in USA attachment and a Made in China attachment over here, all right? So we're gonna see how this goes. This shares a lot of similarities to the Tar River cedars that I used to carry, although this one was even cheaper than that. I bought this bad boy here right off of Amazon, had it shipped right to my house. It was a pretty easy transaction really overall. So I never had a chance to use the Tar River Cedars when I carried them. We had, well, we were only able to get such a limited quantity that I was always filling customer orders and I never had an extra one to try out for myself. But visually, you know, besides the colors, it looks like it's a very similar setup. So I'm, I'm kind of sort of familiar with it. And uh, we're gonna see how it does today planting a food plot screen. All right, so let me tell you what I know about it so far. And I can pull out the specs off of the, uh, the Amazon listing there too. And I think I've, seen these things for sale on, um, oh, um, what is that place called? What's that website? Northern Tool, Northern Tool. That's where I think I've seen these things for sale as well. So you may find it there, you may find it on Amazon. Um, it's, there, there's, man, there's bees and wasps and stuff all over the place. We have them making a hive underneath the, the Kubota fender there too. We knocked out two um, starts of hives right here as well. All right, so we have two hoppers in here. Now one is for your seed, one's for fertilizer. So you can do both at the same time. I am not on the ball, so I don't have any fertilizer to put in here. So we're only gonna use seed today, but that's okay, we'll survive. All right, and so then underneath you have all these red, well, seed cups, I guess they are. And you're gonna have two seed cups going down with a tube to each individual disc. And that's because you have the two different hoppers that are up top. So uh, one front and one back and that drop everything down simultaneously down to the disc as you're going along. You're gonna see a lot of some spring tension adjustments. You have different spacing adjustments too. You can pull one of these uh, well, little black flaps in and out completely if you wanna block off a row or open it back up. So you could plant things like corn. You have six inch spacing all along here. You do every six inches, you know, every other, every third one, whatever you wanna do, you have a lot of flexibility. That's what I really like about this setup. Now, the other really cool thing is that it came looking just like what you see here. I, I don't think I've done a single thing to it except for fold these down. These were in a, in a tucked up position just for shipping purposes so they didn't get damaged, but you have this roller cage here as well um, as you're going along just to kind of break up any clumps inside, help smooth it out. And then of course, this is a little bit of spring tension on there too to really smooth it as you're going along. Uh, Chris had asked what this is for. I don't, I don't know what it's for. Um, you can step on it, I guess, stand up there maybe if you wanted to. Not really sure. It looks like there's sealed bearings all throughout here. I have not found any Zerks on here, which is, well, a bit surprising. I do see grease on uh, the axle rod that's going through here as well. There's some grease on the chain too. Uh, but that's really about it. But all that said, this is ground driven or ground engaging the chain. There's one on either side is going to drop the seed down at a certain rate, which is adjustable with this knob here. So as you're going along with your speed, if you're going fast or slow, it's going to drop seed at a constant rate based on your setting that you have. So this is how you adjust the amount of seed that comes out of the hopper down to the seed box going into the ground as you're moving along. So you can loosen this little uh, lock nut up on here pull a little retainer that's out and then adjust this one way or another to get the right amount of seed. And this is gonna control a gate that kind of opens up more into the hopper itself or closes most of it off and allows less seed to pass through depending on what you need. They suggest, as most seeders do, experimenting, right? So find a, a test strip, play around with it, see how it does if it's dropping the right amount of seed for you. And then you can multiply that for the rest of the acreage or partial acreage or squ thousand square feet, whatever you have, and apply that to the rest of it. Now you can plant from three quarters of an inch down to two inches with this cedar right here. And you can do so by adjusting the height of this roller cage. So the higher that it is, which you adjust uh, by loosening this up and raising it or lowering it, the higher it is, the deeper you can go. If you lower this uh, roller cage down, then you're gonna plant shallower. So that's how you're gonna make your adjustment with this. Seems to make sense. A few more points of consideration. Number one, this is about 530 pounds, all right? so. Yeah, I don't know if the 1025 will lift it up. When we get it back to our house, maybe we'll try to hook it up to that and see what happens. The problem is that the weight is, a lot of it's further away from the three point and the further out you go, the less you can lift. Uh, the John Deere 3025E doesn't have an issue lifting it up. It's gonna be a 60 inch uh, working width is what they list. It looks like the overall width is a little bit wider, but working width for what your seed can do is about 60 inches. Now something disappointing is that this is not gonna be quick hitch compatible. You can see how this kind of comes out at a goofy angle. There's no way to get a hook up underneath there and 
and try to work your way around all the steel that's in the way. So not quick hitch compatible. Again, we recently uh, reviewed a Titan fence line trimmer and that also wasn't quick hitch compatible. Uh, it's not that hard. I mean, China makes all sorts of quick hitches. I don't know why they can't make their attachments to work along with them, but what do you do? We got it hooked up directly. There is one gentleman, I'll have to see if I can find the links, who had this, did a bit of a review, had to get some replacement parts when something broke and it took a while to get replacement parts. So um, this probably isn't the highest quality item. I'm just throwing that out there. But for me, I had a, a 48 inch Casco cedar. I wanted something a little bit bigger. So I'm trying this out. Most of the other cedars that are out there are just crazy expensive, right? This thing was under three grand. I'll look up the exact price, but just a, a f mere fraction of the cost. You can buy like five of these for the price of getting one like high-end commercial grade cedar. So I thought it was worth a gamble, worth a, a shot to see how it does and uh, show you guys what it can do. All right, so that's the main highlights that I can tell you about this cedar here, but now it's time to pack it full of seed and get to work. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Field Tough brings you an easy way to seed your field, lawn, garden, or food plot with their three-point seeder. This 60-inch seeder fits category one three-point hitches and has 10 rows to make your seeding faster with a row spacing of six inches and a sewing depth ranging from three quarters of an inch to two inches. This seeder is the perfect way to seed your corn, beans, oat, grass seed, food plot mix, and so much more. This seeder features adjustable slots that allow you to specify the opening for your specific needs, adding versatility. The seeder also includes two boxes with closable sides. The durable, reliable construction and design of the Field Tough Seeder makes it the perfect fit for your seeding needs. So folks, we are a Northwoods Whitetails food plot dealer, all right? So right now we're, we're kind of testing the waters on what products will sell for us. Now, this heavy duty food plot screen is something I have had my eyeballs on for years and uh, now I have a really good opportunity to use it. It just looks like a really cool product and so um, let me tell you a little bit more about it. I'll, I'll read it off the website so you can see what it's all about. So it goes on to say how many times have you been busted by deer going to or from your stand on or near your food plot or other deer using your plots fully exposed to the road or trails? Well we may have a solution. Our food plot screen does exactly what it sounds like. Screens food plots. Imagine having the ability to plant a wall 10 to 15 foot wide and up to 14 foot high. Access your stand easier, break up your large plot into multiple smaller ones, or just hide the entire plot to encourage more secure daytime use by the deer. If you have a poaching problem from a road, this may be your answer. By planting in late May to mid-June, our plot screen will reach 12 to 14 foot high depending on conditions. We have been testing various plantings since 2006 and feel we have come up with the best annual screen available Many companies add Milo or grain sorghum to their screening products, which we strongly recommend avoiding. Think about it. Deer eat sorghum, they eat Milo seed heads. Why would you want deer eating your screen? This can be a great tool you can use to help your success this year with seeding rates in the 8 to 10 pounds per acre. This is a new hybrid made and we're excited to offer it for you. The first year of testing has screens 14 to 15 foot tall in Michigan and has stayed 9 to 10 feet tall during winter. A few things to keep in mind with this screen. Soil temperatures must be over 65 degrees. Nighttime lows must be over 50. This hybrid does not do well in wet soils, so you're better off waiting a few weeks for the soil to dry out before planting. A late June planting will still reach 12 feet tall. A late July planting still reaching seven foot tall. This heavy duty food plot screen has been tested for three years in the tough upper Michigan climate. It has withstood freezing rain, snow, high winds, and brutally cold temperatures and stayed upright when it mattered the most. Unlike most greens, this variety will take winter weather when planted correctly. A 12 foot tall screen doesn't do you any good if it's on the ground by November 1st.
Alrighty folks, so that went pretty smooth overall, and this is my first time using it, and so it took some tweaking, and you saw me getting on and off the tractor a lot initially to try to adjust seed depth. I adjusted the top link a bit to change the angle, try to get the disc down in a little bit more adjusted the amount of seed coming in and out. Something that I found with these seed adjustments is that the closer you get to zero, the more erratic, I guess, the seed drop is. You know, you get to a certain point, maybe the two and a half or three setting or higher, and it starts to flow at an expected rate. But when I had this set down towards two, I felt the seed drop was pretty inconsistent and I wasn't getting as much seed down as I wanted to. And so I ended up going over the last area that we did um, with a really wide screen, an extra pass just to have more seed on there because I don't think enough was dropping down. So I was looking around and a lot of the seed is buried very well, but then you come into certain areas when it's, it's kind of just riding on the surface, almost missed the furrow um, in a few spots too, not really covered up. Now, for the most part, you can't see the seed. Uh, it did a good job, but there are gonna be certain areas where uh, it's, it's exposed a bit. And I suppose if you wanted to go real crazy with it you could come back over with a drag or with a cult packer and roll this into but we're going to roll with it see how it does because overall i mean you can't see the vast majority this is red seed it stands out to the naked eye pretty darn easy so the majority of it is covered up um, but there is a little bit that did wind up exposed now i did discover that one side of this roller does have a zerk on it the other one is and was completely missing. Um, these were greased already. I could see grease in there already, so we were good to go off the bat, but similar to that, that Titan fence line mower where the Zerk just popped right out, you know, one of these is missing, and then this one's, you know, this one's there at least, but uh, Zerks in general are kind of a, well, they're necessary evil. They make life a lot easier, um, but if something can go wrong, that's a, that's a common area where something can go wrong. So you can broadcast or or drill in basically this seed. Um, I was just on the phone earlier today, just double checking, making sure I was doing this the right way with uh, John up there, North Northwoods Whitetails, and he actually just got done um, uh, broadcast seeding this today. And so, you know, obviously I'm using a planter or a seeder here, and it's suggested about seven and a half inches if you're gonna use one of these, but these are set up at six inches. So I just want every seed drop, it's gonna be a little bit closer together, but you can broadcast this. Uh, and then like rolled in with a cult packer or a drag, um, or you can use a, a piece of equipment like this as well. So a lot of ways to do it. You don't have to necessarily plant this very deep. You just want to get it covered up, maybe three quarters of an inch. But I'm excited to see how this turns out. So we'll keep you guys updated. You're going to see just this, this blank, you know, wide open area here. And hopefully within three months or so, you know, it's way taller than I am. Uh, who knows, maybe we strike out and, and <laughs> knowing me, that's how my luck goes. But you can see our, our, our food plot over there with uh, our clover and our, our cover crop of the winter rye. That's doing phenomenal right now. I'm gonna have to take care of that, uh, do some mowing and trimming and spraying sometime soon on that too. But uh, we're having good luck over that. So maybe that luck will carry over here too. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Now we don't sell this cedar. This is just something, again, we bought off of Amazon. We'll put a link on there on, uh, on where it was at so you can take a look at it for yourself. But we do sell broadcast spreaders from Ag Spray, uh, electrical control for those too, so you don't have a PTO to worry about. Um, can broadcast seed all over the place, but we sell a ton of tractor attachments. We sell and ship all over the country. We'd love to earn your business. You gotta check out goodworkstractors.com, see what we have to offer. If you did enjoy today's video, we put out tractor videos, doing work with them, um, showing new features, products, that kind of thing all the time. Hit that subscribe button right down below, completely free. If you want some merchandise to support Good Works Tractors, we're not gonna make any profits off it. We donate all those proceeds to charity, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.